October 31st, St. Quentin. St. Quentin was a Roman descended from a senatorial family. He was full of zeal for the kingdom of Jesus Christ and left his country and went into Gaul, accompanied by 11 other apostles sent from Rome. They separated to extend their campaign of evangelization to the various regions of France. St. Quentin remained at Amen and endeavored by his prayers and labors to make that region part of our Lord's inheritance. By the force of his words and works, he preluded the glory of his martyrdom. He gave sight to the blind, vigor to paralytics, hearing to the deaf, and agility to the infirm, in the name of our Lord, simply by the sign of the cross. All the hours of the day he invoked his God in fervent supplication. But this apostle could not escape the notice of Ricto Varus, the Roman prosecutor who, at the time, represented Maximian Hercules in Gaul. St. Quentin was seized at Amen and thrown into prison and loaded with chains. Rictovarus asked him, How does it happen that you, of such high nobility and the son of so distinguished a father, have given yourself up to so superstitious a religion, a folly, and that you adore the unfortunate man crucified by other men? St. Quentin replied, It is sovereign nobility to adore the Creator of heaven and earth and to obey willingly His divine commandments. What you call folly is supreme wisdom. What is there that is wiser than to recognize the unique true God and to reject with disdain the counterfeits, which are mute, false, and deceiving. When the holy preacher was found to be invulnerable to either promises or threats, the prosecutor condemned him in the most barbarous of tortures. He was stretched on the rack and flogged. He prayed for strength, for the honor and glory of the name of God, forever blessed. He was returned to the prison when executioners who were striking him fell over backwards and told Rictovarus that they were unable to stand up and could scarcely speak. The same angel that blocked the executioners released the prisoner during the night, telling him to go and preach in the city, and that the persecutor would soon fall before the justice of God. His sermon, a commented paraphrase of the Apostles' Creed, has been conserved. To his profession of faith in the Holy Trinity, he added that our Lord Jesus Christ, whom he adored, gave sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, health to the sick, and even life to the dead. He continued to say, At Jesus' voice the lame leaped up and ran, paralytics walked, and water was changed into wine. The Lord has promised to be forever with those who hope in him. By his omnipotence he delivers them, whenever it pleases him, from all their tribulations. When the guards discovered that he had disappeared, though all the doors were barred, and found him in the city preaching, they were all converted. But Rictovarus was furious and said to them, You too have become magicians? Brought back before the tribunal as a sorcerer, St. Quentin said, If by preserving in my faith I am put to death by you, I will not cease to live in Jesus Christ. This is my hope. I maintain it with confidence. He was again placed on the rack and tortured with other demonical means, his flesh pierced with two iron wires from the shoulders to the thighs, and iron nails were thrust into his fingers, his skull, and his body. Finally, this glorious martyr was decapitated. After praying and saying, O Lord Jesus, God of God, light of light, for whom of all love I have given up my body to all the torments, I implore thee, in thy holy mercy, receive my spirit and soul, which I offer thee with all the ardor of my desires. Do not abandon me, O most kind King, most clement King, who liveth and reigneth with the Father, in unity with the Holy Ghost, for ever and ever. His death occurred on October 31st in the year 287. St. Quentin remains in great honor in France above all, where more than 52 churches and as many localities were, at the beginning of the 20th century, dedicated to his memory. He is honored also in Belgium and in Italy. Charlemagne and the kings of France have gone to venerate the relics of St. Quentin. Let us never forget that the sufferings of the present life are not worthy to be compared with the glory to come, prepared by God for all those who love him.